All right, hey all, next day. And now that I've got all that other stuff cleared out, I'm working on the van. Like I said briefly before, I'm taking this to a rally this weekend. It's a treasure hunt rally where you drive around and try and find landmarks. But it's gonna be up in Vermont, a lot of back roads, and the brakes on this on the front are vibrating really badly under hard braking. And there's a lot of slop in the front end. My goal had been a complete rebuild of the front end, ball joints, uh, bushings, tie rods, the whole shebang, but with all the other car problems I had, I don't have time to pull the entire thing apart, especially the bushings. So what I'm going to be doing is doing the brakes, which is going to involve hopefully getting the rotors reground, hopefully they've got enough meat on them that I can do that, new pads, you know, all that stuff and then replace the idler arm, the pitman arm, because I know one or both of those is really bad. Probably do the tie rods, inner and outer, because I can just measure the existing ones and match those, and that should give me a decent enough alignment, and check the ball joints, and if they're really bad, I'll replace them, and if they're okay, I'll just put off that for the time being for this weekend. But it's right now it's Tuesday morning, I have work in two hours and so I'm gonna just get the front rotors off and get them off to get ground so I can pick them up this evening and work on the rest of it. Here we are. That was nice and easy, which is what I was hoping for. Um, spindle looks fine. I don't see any of the major issues, except I want to see if I can get some slider pins. I can clean these up if I have to, but I'd much rather replace them. But as far as the rotors themselves, they've got meat on them, but both of them, I'll show you the other ones, much worse. Both of them have pinning like this on the back. So little spots of rust from probably when the van was sitting for a couple of years that are deep enough that they're de probably contributing to my problem. But there's a definitely the thing that's causing the problem on the other side, you'll see. Hopefully they can get these out. Hopefully these are too deep. Um, if they can make them significantly, like if they can get rid of the bubbling area around them and just make them a slight divot, then that should be fine for working. But we'll see. Um, while I'm in here, the, this joint right here on the pitman arm and the corresponding idler arm on the other side are both really clearly bad. The tie rods aren't great. So yeah, I'm going to try and get the pitman arm off, replace that. I'm going to replace the idler arm on the other side and replace this assembly. Ball joints are original, but they don't seem terrible, so I may skip them. But I'm also going to put the shocks on. I just remembered I have four shocks. I'm going to be in here anyway. I'll replace these because that'll also help with its handling and whatnot. But let me show you that rotor on the other side. This one I'm not sure we can save. Um, this is a raised lip here. I don't know why it's there, but there's a raised lip all the way around like that, as well as a lot more significant pits. I think these are all going to be too deep, but I'm going to drop them off, find out, and if I have to order rotors, I have to order rotors, because I didn't see that. You can't see that from the outside, and they're pretty gnarly. Um, if I do have to order rotors, the other reason I wanted to get these off as soon as possible is because that'll give me, it's Tuesday now, that gives me through Friday day to have those rotors arrive, which should give me enough time. Um, while I'm here, though, again, Shocks, whatnot. This is that that's that joint I was talking about. Those are kind of nasty. The bearings I'm gonna reuse if I can reuse the rotors. If I can't reuse the rotors, I'm not sure because I don't think it's worth trying to hammer these races out in order to move them to something else. I'd prefer to reuse these because they're nice Timkin bearings. They're the old made in the USA ones. So um if I don't have to replace them. I'd love to not have to replace them, but we'll see what happens. So he's got to go off to the shop now. 
All right, back from dropping off those rotors. They're pretty iffy on whether they're going to be able to cut those or not, but they're going to give me a call. I still have about 45 minutes before I have to start work, so I'm not going to start tearing the steering apart because I'd rather do that all at once so I don't lose track of where I am. I think I'm going to try and throw the front, maybe the rear shocks in because that should be a pretty easy job. So yeah, let's get some shocks in this thing. That'll be a decided improvement and it'll get at least a few things off of my pile of van shit over here. All right. So I said that these didn't look blown. I weren't sure if these were blown, but oh yeah, they so are. And just compress them and they're not coming back up again, which means they're completely blown out. So these are KBY mono tubes. They're supposed to improve handling, but honestly at this point, the fact that the shock is actually gonna be doing anything for damping is gonna be an improvement in handling. So I've got this one in, I'm gonna go do the other one. And yeah, I'm, <laughs> I'm always entertained when you take them off and they'll just compress down like this and won't come back up because it lets you know without any shadow of a doubt that that part is done. Hey all, it's the evening and I'm getting to this much later and with much less enthusiasm than I had this morning because I dropped off those rotors and found out from the shop that they're completely unsalvageable. And it's not the rust pits. The rust pits are bad, but he thought he might be able to deal with those. But they're, the one he tried to cut was so warped, he had to cut it just on one side, past the overall thickness the entire rotor is allowed, just to get it to not have a warp in it anymore. Which means that by the time he cut the other side so it didn't have a warp in it, it would be massively below thickness. So they're completely unusable. They're completely unsalvaged. So those rotors are completely unusable, completely unsalvageable, and I had to order New rotors, at that point I had to order new wheel bearings as well because there's no good way to get the race out in a way you aren't going to possibly damage it. So all that's been ordered along with new slider pins because if I had to order I just ordered those two. That's all been ordered from Rock Auto, but now I'm paranoid about whether it's going to show up in time because it's Tuesday now, they have to show up by sometime on Friday at the absolute latest. Like if they show up Friday while I'm at work, I'll have just enough time to throw them front end back together and get on the road for the thing I'm doing Saturday. So yay. Oh, and also I stopped off to pick up the rotors at O'Reilly's where they were trying to cut them. And this decided it didn't need to have the key turn in the ignition anymore in the parking lot. So it was supposed to be five minutes at the store turned into an hour plus waiting for AAA to show up. Because first I tried to get it working and then when I couldn't I called AAA. And then the AAA driver couldn't knew he wasn't going to be able to get it on his truck with the wheels cranked over to one side. So he spent a bunch of time and he managed to, by wiggling and jiggling and all the stuff I'd been doing, but also introducing a rubber mallet into the mix, managed to get the key to turn. So I got this back home and now the key seems to be turning okay, except that the lock's a little crunchy feeling. So there's definitely something wrong in it. I'm not going to risk taking it out anywhere and turning the key off there because I'm probably going to get stuck again. So now I have to put a lock cylinder in the wagon, which was supposed to be the vehicle that I was going to drive while I was fixing the van and was also supposed to be my backup vehicle for if I didn't get the van done in time. So it's a lot. It's all a lot. Also, apparently every loud vehicle in the world is driving past my house today. So I did get the shocks in. Anyway, this one, this bolt didn't want to come out because the bushing was spinning in the, or the, the sleeve was spinning in the bushing. So I kind of trashed this bolt. I put them all together with the bolts, but I know what size I need the next time I'm at a hardware store. This, hopefully this week I'll get to it, but if not, the next time I'm at a hardware store, I'm going to buy new grade 8 bolts and replace all the bolts and nuts on these just to make sure that it's all good and I don't have a problem down the line. But right now they're in and I can check them off as done enough 
for now. There's nothing more I can do with the brakes until I get the parts. So the next thing is the steering and yeah. So this idler arm, this joint is completely worn out to the point where when I filled it with grease, it visibly moved um, from the pressure of the grease being pushed into it. So I need to get this off. I need to get it broken out here, which I think I'm going to use the pick I need the pickle fork for. I haven't taken one of these off in so long, I don't remember. But I need to get this off and unbolted, and get the new one on and bolt it in so that that's done. I'm going to try and do the same thing with the pitman arm on the other side because those two I know I won't mess up the alignment by changing. And then if I get those in fine, then I'm going to deal with the tie rods here because they're not great but they're not terrible either. But those I'm going to have to be very careful about when I take them out, measuring them and um, maybe even building a jig so that when I Put the new ones together i know they're the exact same length and therefore the alignment isn't going to change um i am not doing ball joints unless every unless those parts show up like tomorrow i don't think i'm gonna even risk getting near the ball joints but i definitely want to get at least the idler arm changed if i possibly can um, i'm also going to try and do the back shocks as well i think since I'm sort of stuck, I might as well throw the parts in that I can throw in. <sighs> yep. As you can tell, I'm just kind of a little frustrated right now because I did all that work last night to get all the cars dealt with so that I could concentrate on the van and then that thing broke. <sighs> but let's get to work. Let's see if I can get this idler arm out of here. All right, well, that kind of got away from me. The bottom of the idler arm didn't want to pop. The problem was trying to hammer on it to pop it loose. The whole assembly was just shifting, so I couldn't get any actual oomph behind it. So that turned into just removing the entire thing, as you may or may not have been able to see in the video. Um, I'm only filming now because a neighborhood kid came by and really wanted to help, and I wasn't going to put him on video. So. I've pulled the whole thing out. The old tie rods and everything are down there. This is the center link. It's been scrubbed in the parts washer. I'm going to let it dry overnight and then give it another quick wash with probably brake clean or something tomorrow. Scuff it and get some paint on it and then start the reassembly process. I also have to get the pitman arm out. I got it off of this but not off of the box. And the clearance is really tight where the box is. I'm not actually sure I can get the pitman arm puller on it. So that's going to get interesting. I really don't want to have to pull the box off. But at this point, I'm going to do the tie rods because there's no reason not to. So I just realized I don't know which is the left and I don't know which is the right of the tie rods. Because I popped them both off in the same place. Hopefully they're the same length. I'll do some measuring. And if not, I'm just going to have to commit to a... I'll just have to commit to an alignment, but yeah, and you can see me, the work I did trying to get the idler arm off. I mean, this stuff needs to happen. The tie rods need to get done. I just kind of didn't want to have to do them this thing. So I'll pick this up tomorrow. All right. Other day, the front end of the van. I got this all stripped apart yesterday. I don't remember where I stopped exactly, but... Um, this is the center link. It got cleaned up in the parts washer last night. And then today it got a really quick wire brushing and spraying with rust reformer and then some uh, cast iron paint. That's just 
this would be fine. I just wanted to get a coat of paint on it. I mean, this thing's not going to rot out in any meaningful way. It's just a solid chunk of steel. So today I need to get the pitman arm off because that's the last piece of the old ugh, steering. This is this there. And once I get that off, I can work on reassembly. I have a pitman arm pillar, puller that I bought, but it's going to be a really tight fit in there. I'm not looking forward to this. The, um, there's a frame uh, bumper brace that runs right by it, and it's really close to the front suspension. So we will see. Um, my calipers that I ordered yesterday, yesterday, um, were supposed to, according to FedEx, they're due by the end of the day today. They're also, according to FedEx, they're still sitting in the warehouse in New York. So who knows what's going on there? Also extra fun, they're coming in, even though it's one order, they're coming in two separate boxes. So it's possible I will get half the stuff, which is just enough to screw me. But I need to get this all as far as I can anyway, on the off chance those parts show up. So pitman arm puller, yank that off, and then I can start working on reassembly. done. This actually came off shockingly easy given on the other problems I've been having with this. Um, the only part that was really a hassle is where the puller is. All I could get was an 18 inch wrench on it. I couldn't get a, anything else to turn it faster. And my ratcheting wrenches only go to 18, which is a severe oversight. So it just took a while. But once I got the bumper bracket out of the way, it went just fine. And fortunately, this is one of the smart pitman hammers that have one extra fat uh, tooth in here, so you can only put it on a certain way. So I don't have to worry too much about getting it aligned properly, even though I was trying very hard to pay attention. So with that, I can start assembly. I'm going to put the new one on this right away, just so that's done. And then, yeah, it's time to start. So yeah, I'm going to get the new one, and I'll get that on right away. Right. didn't realize the camera wasn't recording, but oh well. Um, so, new Pitman arm is in. That was a pain in the butt. The um, I put a little bit of anti-seize on the splines, not the threads for the bolt, but the splines of the thing to help it slide on. And even with that, getting it back on was absolute bastard. The angle's really terrible. Uh, you have like a couple of clicks of range out of that really big wrench that I was using, which isn't actually even the right size, so it kept wanting to slide off the nut. And it's like, if you're sitting, it's too, it's the wrong place. If you're standing, it's the wrong place. It's just, I have absolute noodle arms from it. Even though it wasn't that physically hard, it was just, the angle was so bad that it was a lot of work. But my partner came and helped me once she was done work on her car. Um, so I got that in. I've got the um, center link in right now. Right now on this side, the idler arm is attached to the center link, but the center link's not attached to anything because I painted the bracket and I'm waiting for it to dry so that that can get reattached. So the only thing left is now bolting that bracket on and, t and putting the idler arm onto it and then making up the two... Um, tie rod assemblies. So the tie rod assemblies are going to require me to very carefully measure them and make matching assemblies as far as the lengths. The problem is I didn't keep track of my right and my left, so if the ones I have are slightly different lengths, so I'm putting that stuff down, um, if the ones I have are slightly different lengths, the assemblies, then if I don't get left and right correct, which will be a complete guess, um, Fortunately, the worst thing is the steering wheel may be slightly off from true, but like that'll be a minor pain in the butt. But I have to get those assembled and on, and then that'll be the whole steering. I'm going to work on this maybe tomorrow, hopefully tomorrow. I don't know. Um, and then it's just down to 
Once I get those in, it's just down to the brake parts showing up as to whether or not the van is going to be back on the road in time to go where it has to go Friday night. It's current. In case I didn't say it's Wednesday right now. So, yeah, I have tomorrow, and then I have some of Friday. But right now the parts I need are still in the warehouse, even though they were supposed to be delivered today. I'm not impressed with Rock Auto lately, and especially not with their shipping. This is the second time I've had this happen where parts sat, shipped, shipped. Um, yeah, but... Good thing is, while I was working on this, my wife put in new slider pins and the little slider pin bushing, condom, whatever the hell you want to call it, things into her car. Because when I did the brakes on that the other night, I noticed that one of the slider pins, the, the little rubber boot was torn and the pin had some rust on it. So I temporarily put it together, got the parts, and then in order to let me work on this, she just took care of replacing those herself. And then she also helped me with getting that thing tightened up. It took two of us because one of us had to hold the end of the um, big ratchet handle while the other one actually tightened so it wouldn't keep falling off. But I'm done for today. I have, I'm, I've got my noodly armed. And the little bracket's going to dry tonight. Tomorrow, maybe I'll come back out to this. I'm rambling. I'm going to go inside and take a shower. I will catch up with you tomorrow. All right, next day in Shock of Shocks. My parts showed up. Yesterday evening they were still in the warehouse. Today they're here. So apparently it's just FedEx doesn't update anything. So I'm going to open these up, make sure everything's here, and paint the... I might paint the rotors. I may not. I don't know if I have enough time. Oh, shoot. I have to paint if I do that. I don't know. Anyway. But my partner is going to help me get the whole front end of this back together, hopefully, so that... If I'm really lucky, van will be drivable by the end of tonight. So as it turns out, step one of this is going to be taking apart these rotors because they already have races pressed into them. But since I bought brand new Timken bearings, I'm not going to use these whatever brand races when I have the correct races to match my Timkins. Um, so those guys need to get hammered out and the new ones are going to have to get pressed in. I don't need like a press press to do it. I just need something to drive them in. And then, yeah, continued assembly. All right, this is either very clever or too clever for my own good here. So I need to make these two tie rod end assemblies the exact same length as what was in the van. Otherwise, I screw up the alignment. And one, I was able to figure out which is left and right because I realized both of them have to point forward. So this is the left one, and this is, wait a minute, shit, that doesn't work. No, yeah, okay, and that's the right one. Anyway, so what I did was drilled a hole in here with a step drill bit, drilled a hole in here with a step drill bit, so these fit nice and tight, and then screwed this down and screwed that down. So now this is the exact length the piece needs to be. So when I put together the new tie rods, it doesn't, I don't have to measure anything. I don't have to count threads. I just have to make it fit in exactly these two spots. And then once I'm done with the left one, I'll unscrew that, put the right one in here, put the right one in, you know, with that turned around, screw that down, and then do the right one. Nice and simple. I'm not going to film that because it's just going to be a meal, twisting things onto things. But I think this should get me the exact same length so I don't have to worry about the alignment in the van at all. And there we go, fully assembled. Um, there's a slight complication in that with the shiny new not smashed boots on these, I had to like push them down into the jig to make sure they were in the right place because they wouldn't just slot in on their own, but that was easy enough. For those of you who never dealt with this style of tie rod assemblies, the outer tie rod has normal threads, the inner tie rod has reverse threads, and then this piece in the middle has normal threads on this end, a gap, and reverse threads on this end. The reason for that is it allows them to adjust the tie rod length on the vehicle without having to disconnect a tie rod. You just loosen these two screws because these clamp it in place. So you loosen these two and then you can rotate this 
and if you rotate it in one direction it unscrews both and if you rotate it in the other it screws both in and changes the length so i just fed one end in fed the other end in until they were close-ish and then put them in the jig and did the final adjusting using this but they're both assembled i've put the grease nipples on so the only things that need these need now are to be bolted on and have the you know nuts and cotter pins put in so these are ready to go on the vehicle steering is now done from tie rod to pitman arm all the way across so that's every wear point in the steering is now done the box you know might have some wear in it but it's going to be inconsequential so next up is rotors i'm going to clean these off and do a quick and dirty job of masking the face and painting the outer edge here and the center hub just to minimize surface rust on those. I'll get a little bit of paint on this face, but I don't mind because the brake pads will take it right back off again. Alrighty, got both rotors painted up with engine enamel. It's good to 600 degrees plus, so that should be fine for rotors because I'm not tracking this. Um, taped up the faces, obviously. A little bit of, there's probably going to be spots where the brakes rub, where I got paint on that, that they'll have to take off. And there's probably spots where the brake rotor, the brake pads don't rub that I didn't get paint on, but it's going to be way better than just the bare steel that'll be you know rusty and nasty looking within a few months. So these need to dry. My partner packed all of the wheel bearings with grease, so we're going to go get dinner, and that'll give these the hour they need to be dry to the touch, and that means I can assemble the brakes and then we'll be theoretically done. I've already retracted the calipers which means I don't have to worry about snapping off bleeders because that's already a done thing. All the parts I have that are possible wear parts are all brand new. I have wheel seals, I have new brake pads. So yeah at this point it's literally just wait for these to dry and assemble the brakes. It's kind of astounding how different a place I am today than yesterday. Yesterday I was working late into the night and in an absolute panic because I was missing a bunch of parts and I wasn't sure what kind of time I was going to have. And then today, got all the parts I need, I got a good early start, and looks like I'm going to be able to get this all done. So it's amazing how different a day makes. So yeah, I'm going to do a dinner and I'll catch up with you afterwards. All right, back at it. Got to grab the brakes bits over here. My new wheel seals and pads. I'm running the like nicest premium ceramic pads, lowest dusting, blah, 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 that I could find because Jesus Christ, does this thing produce a ton of dust and ruin the front wheels. Um, wow, I need a light. So this is going to be my best attempt at avoiding that. But, so, this is now all dry, and actually, the finish came out really nice for my half-assing it. And yeah, there we go. Like I said, I'm not worried about a little bit of paint on the braking surfaces, because that'll get scrubbed off real quick. So, yeah, let's get this thing together.
All right, and that's this side together. And of course, because nothing can be simple, I ordered two of the same pin kits, you know, these things for the caliper from Rock Auto and got two of the exact same boxes, one of which has the hardware kit for a set of drum brakes in it with a completely different internal, like the bag that those are in has a totally different part number than the bag that these are in. So what the hell happened there? But I had to reassemble this side with the old slider pins. The pads were evenly worn, so I don't think these slider pins are a problem. So this will suit me for now, but I'm going to obviously get the correct ones from Rock Auto and um, install those. And then the wheel seal on this side did not go in great. It got very slightly bent. So I'm pretty sure it's sealing against the surface, but I'm pretty sure it's also going to wear out really fast. So because I need this to be ready tomorrow, I left it. It'll be fine for, you know, a couple of weeks at maximum, you know, maximum it'll take me to get back to this. But I just got to order another wheel seal and install that one better. But other than that, everything else went together just fine. Um, this is going to need anti-seize on the threads and then the side is ready to go back together and be done. I'm going to do the same thing on the other side. I'm not going to film it. I just want to get this blasted out. Good morning. So it's the next day and I've actually taken the van out for a drive. Brakes worked great once the extra paint burned off. It scared me real bad because I went to check them and they were smoking and then I realized, wait, it's the paint. Um, there's a squeak in this corner on bad bumps that I think might be the shock. I'm hoping that it's just the crappy bolts on this side. I've already bought new bolts. Um, the steering's fine in terms of it doesn't pull, but it's definitely off alignment. The steering wheel is now slightly cocked. Um, but the big thing is I'm not going to the event that I was doing all this work for. Um, Combination of reasons. One, it's in rural Vermont, a lot of driving, and it's supposed to rain all day. So I just decided driving a van through rural back roads in the rain was likely to be terrifying rather than fun. Also, I have a sleep disorder and I have anxiety, and both of those have been kicking my butt lately, especially with all the vehicles constantly breaking down. So I just decided it wasn't going to be fun. I'd rather not stress myself on something that's supposed to be fun. But the end result is that I've got more time to work on this. But I think for right now, this is going to be the end of the episode because everything I did essentially worked. It's got some more tweaking that needs to be done. There's some, you know, defective parts like you saw. But I got it all back together and it's working. I can drive it if I need to. So that's it for now. I'm going to come back and revisit this and either just do that little bit of work or pull the whole front end apart. But either way, I will see you on that video, so I will talk to you all later, and bye.